uh, in this conference. And title of my work is a frequency domain approach to the surface temperature and statistical elucidation of its association with total ozone concentration. This work is carried out jointly by me and my co-researcher, Dr. Gautami Chattopadhyay from the University of Calcutta. And uh, it is reflected in the title of the topic that this work has basically two focal points. One is surface temperature and the other is total ozone. And we will present a statistical analysis on their association in an Indian meteorological subdivision. <clears throat> now, before starting, I should answer to one question that naturally arises. That is, why we are considering total ozone and surface temperature simultaneously. Now, although we are going to report a study on local scale, but as a motivation towards that study to consider total ozone and surface temperature, we need to have a look at the global scenario. What is the physics? What is the motivating physics behind that? Now, in order to answer this question, why total ozone and surface temperature? We need to have a look at the process of radiative forcing. We know that radiative forcing is a useful mechanism to understand the relative climate changes. And that is induced by the perturbations which are caused by radiative processes. So if there be any depletion in the stratospheric ozone that leads to an enhancement in the penetration of ultraviolet ray and that affects or influences various processes in the tropopause, which in turn influences the tropospheric ozone whose association with the surface temperature is very well documented in the literature. And therefore, the stratospheric ozone has a forcing on the surface temperature in direct way. And moreover, I just mentioned that it is already well documented in the literature that there is a good association between the tropospheric ozone and surface temperature. So combining these two, we think that we need to take into account the total ozone concentration, which is a sum of tropospheric as well as stratospheric ozone to study the surface temperature, to study the complexity of surface temperature, or to study the role of surface temperature in the climate, to model the climate using surface temperature, we need to have some insight into its complexity. And for that purpose, we may try to we may attempt to have a statistical elucidation of the association between total ozone and surface temperature. And this is basically the motivation behind the study that I'm going to discuss in further details. This is the plan of the talk. Firstly, I will further explain the motivation behind the study. Then I'll discuss on discrete time domain approach rather the time series approach, the basics of time series approach. And then why we are going to adopt 
the frequency domain approach in this case. And finally, we will try to see whether there is any presence of common cycle between the total ozone time series and the surface temperature time series when considered in terms of frequency domain. So this is the overall plan of the top. Variation in the thermal structure of the stratosphere as well as troposphere. I just mentioned that. If there is any change in troposphere and stratosphere in the ozone concentration, then automatically that leads to, that results in some variations in the thermal structure of stratosphere as well as stratosphere. And I just mentioned that it is there in the process of ozone formation that the temperature of the lower atmosphere increases with increase in the tropospheric ozone. And on the other hand, the decrease in stratospheric ozone results in a decrease in the temperature. And finally, the tropospheric and stratospheric ozone has the capacity to absorb the infrared radiation that is emitted by the surface of the earth. They can absorb the infrared radiation that can act as a trap. So automatically it comes in our mind that there might be some statistical association between that concentration and the surface temperature. Later I'm coming to the speciality of our study zone. Here we are mentioning two very important references where the studies on ozone and temperature observations have been demonstrated in global scale. One, both are by Strenbrek et al. One in 2003, other in 2006. They have reported in the global scale the association between temperature and ozone concentration. Now these observations indicate that the ozone precursors have experienced a considerable change due to industrialization. That has led to changes in anthropogenic sources. And all of us know that the anthropogenic practices significantly influence the formation of ozone. So as a consequence, changes have occurred to the radiative forcing due to ozone. Due to the industrialization, we have changes in anthropogenic sources and consequently, changes have occurred to the radiative forcing due to ozone. And because of the dependence of the rates of chemical reaction in the atmosphere, the formation of ozone is sensitive to the changes in temperature. This is what we are trying to emphasize on, how the temperature and total ozone concentration are associated. And this is very well known fact that tropospheric ozone is naturally occurring greenhouse gas, which is formed as a product of photochemical reactions. And this precursors are oxides of nitrogen, CH4, CO, and volatile organic compounds. And due to the industrialization, as I just mentioned, the anthropogenic precursor emissions from fossil fuel and biomass burning have led to elevated ambient ozone concentration. It has led to an elevation in the ambient ozone concentration over a large portion of the Earth's surface. Here we are presenting a picture that, that is taken from nature from the paper of Sitch et al. This shows the left, the first one, A and B. This shows this is the current and the second one is what may happen after 80 years. There's the projected view. This is how the industrialization will change in, will bring into changes in the concentrations of ozone. I have already told that radiative forcings continues to be a useful tool to estimate the relative climate impacts due to radiatively induced perturbations. And the practical appeal of radiative forcing lies in the assumption that there exists a general relationship between global mean forcing and the global mean equilibrium surface temperature response. 
and the radiative forcing at troposphere and stratospheric ozone that I just mentioned have been thoroughly discussed in this reference by Schemel et al. Now this discussion made so far <clears throat> have motivated us to demonstrate a frequency domain approach to the total ozone concentration and surface temperature time series over Kolkata, which is where I belong to. It is a mega city of India and one of the highly polluted cities of India. And meteorologically, this belongs to Gangetic West Bengal. And Gangetic West Bengal has some various meteorological importances. What are those? This Gangetic West Bengal is characterized by significant Indian summer monsoon rainfall. It is characterized by severe pre-monsoon thunderstorms and both Indian summer monsoon rainfall as well as severe pre-monsoon thunderstorms both have surface temperature has an important parameter to be considered to create any prediction model. So surface temperature continues to be a very important climate parameter for Gangetic West Bengal. And hence, as we are considering Kolkata that belongs to Gangetic West Bengal, so temperature is surface temperature is a very important climate parameter for Kolkata. And given various prior studies, we present a study that endeavors to explore the association between total concentration of ozone and temperature over Kolkata through time series approach. And what is our study period? Our study period is the transition from monsoon to post-monsoon. This transition period from monsoon to post-monsoon, this means we are gradually moving away from summer and we are approaching towards winter. And this Kolkata, the study zone, during this period experiences some peculiar events that lead to pollution. What are those? This city is characterized by various, uh, various events, religious events, in particular this period of time. This, these religious events lead to excessive emission of different pollutants. And those lead to some significant changes in the environment and makes it highly polluted during this period as, as we proceed towards winter through the transition. And after this analysis of total concentration of ozone and surface temperature through statistical time series analysis, we will make interpretations near the end of this presentation. So we are now in the time series part of this study. Our study zone, I have mentioned, we will consider two years, 2015 and 2016. And period of study is this transition from post-monsoon to monsoon to post-monsoon. And we have daily data for TCO as well as surface temperature. So what is a time series? Time series is basically a series of equidistant observations of a random variable taken at equidistant time points. So time series is basically a collection of realizations of a random variable in the time domain. And we know that a random variable can be of two types. One is continuous random variable and the other is discrete random variable. Discrete random variables are usually the dichotomous random variables that usually deal with binary outcomes. But here, surface temperature and TCO, both in a given interval on the real number system can have logically infinitely many realizations. So both of the time series part into continuous random variables. Now, once we are having a time series, we can analyze it from two points of view. 
one is time domain approach and the other is frequency domain approach what is time domain approach in the time domain approach we do not take into account if there be any cyclic pattern in it we consider the data in the domain in which it is obtained realized that is the time domain approach in the time domain approach there are two other types one is discrete approach other is continuous approach discrete approach is a markovian approach continuous approach is auto regressive approach and the second one is frequency domain approach where we are not working on the time domain rather we are working on the frequency domain that is what we are reporting here in the frequency domain approach we analyze the time series in terms of frequency we try to understand whether there is we create spectra and we try to understand whether there is any common spectra in two time series if there is any common spectra between two time series we conclude that they have similar type of periodicity but there is another way of understanding the periodicity that is by autocorrelation but the autocorrelation is not a frequency approach frequency approach helps us to understand in a more robust way to examine whether there is any common periodicity between two time series that is what we are going to report here this i have already mentioned that autocorrelation function is considered as a fundamental tool to understand the periodicity relationship between the given time series over time but here we are not going into either to markovian approach or to auto relation auto correlation approach or to auto regression approach we will look into the patterns in a more robust way that is a frequency domain approach the frequency domain approach involves harmonic analysis what is that harmonic analysis the harmonic analysis is a method of representing the fluctuations within a time series that is generated due to the addition of sine and cosine series here the time series is converted to the sum of sine and cosine series and in the frequency domain approach the time series is considered as outcome of a combined effect of collection of sine and cosine curves that have varying rates of oscillation and here the length of the time series determines the fundamental frequency and the trigonometric functions are integer multiples of the fundamental frequencies this is how we convert a given time series to the frequency domain here yt is considered to be y bar this is the average of yt and ak cos 2 pi kt by n plus bk sin 2 pi kt by n as i have already mentioned that this yt is converted to a sum of a sin and cosine curve what is ak ak is 2 by n what is small n small n is a time point if the time point lies between 0 and n then this is small n yt yt is the observed data cos 2 pi kt by n and bk is 2 by n summation t is equal to 1 to n yt sin 2 pi kt by n and ck is equal to root over ak square plus bk square so once we have determined ak and bk we can easily determine ck and that ck gives us the density of the spectrum that is a spectral density this is a pictorial depiction of how a given time series is converted to a sum of sine and cosine curves in a frequency domain this is a very fundamental uh, the we have taken it from a very fundamental book on the spectral analysis the spectral analysis gives us an important measure and here if we try to plot the spectrum then we plot it the the spectral density against a horizontal axis where we have the periods that are given by fk is equal to k by n which is equal to omega k by 2 pi and having dimension of time to the power minus 1 it is also possible to scale the horizontal axis 
by the reciprocal of the frequency called as period and it is denoted by tau k is equal to 1 by fk. We can consider, we can plot the, the spectral densities against fk or tau k. Tau k is equal to 1 by fk. And omega 1, which is 2 pi by n, the entire 2 pi is divided by n. This is called the fundamental frequency if t lies between 0 and n. Now let us come to the implementation procedure. So first we consider spectra of total ozone concentration and surface temperature during the transition from monsoon to post-monsoon that I have already mentioned. Here we are taking the daily data of September to November in 2015. So we have adequate number of data as we are considering in daily scale. Hence our data length is sufficient for a spectral analysis. It is observed that monthly and semi-monthly cycles and its multiples have dominated the spectra for both total ozone concentration and surface temperature. How do you understand that? Let us look at this plot. This is figure one. What have we plotted here? Here, these peaks indicates the densities at different frequencies or periods. These are the spectral densities that are calculated using that formula for CK is equal to root over AK square plus BK square. So this is a plot of spectral densities along the frequency or period. We observe that at lower frequencies, we have higher spectral densities. In the first one, in the first figure, this is for TOC, at lower frequency, we have higher spectral density. And this red line, indicates a nonlinear trend line along this frequency distribution. And this is the spectrum of surface temperature. The earlier one was the spectrum of total ozone. And this is the spectrum of surface temperature during that post-monsoon to monsoon, monsoon to post-monsoon transition. And this is the spectra. And here also the high frequency cycles are suppressed by the low frequency cycles. How? Because the low frequency cycles have higher densities than the high frequency cycles. So in order to understand the relative strength of the cycles, the spectra are given a closer look. We have fitted a nonlinear trend line to both the spectra and similar pattern. We have observed similar pattern in the trend lines of the nonlinear spectra. And as already mentioned, the periods along with frequency have been presented below the horizontal axis. So this primary similarity, what is the similarity? In both the cases, we have observed that the lower frequencies have higher spectral densities. And in both the cases, the frequency, the densities at higher frequencies are suppressed by the density at the lower frequencies. And the trend line have similar pattern in both the cases. This primary similarity in pattern in the spectra indicates an association between the variability of surface temperature and total ozone concentration over the study zone. So as the frequent, the spectral spectra are similar in type, so there is a basic similarity which is apparent. As we look at the spectra of total ozone concentration, we find that the significant peaks have occurred at frequencies 0 0.0208 and 0 0.0417. And they correspond to the periods of 48 and 24 respectively. Therefore, we understand that frequencies of the above values are having significant probability compared to the neighboring frequencies. And if we look at the spectrum of surface temperature, we observe that the maximum spectral densities occur at frequency 0 0.0417 and 0 0.0521. What do you understand from that? They correspond to the periods 24 and 19.2 respectively. Therefore, we find the common spectrum, common spectrum with period of length 24 that corresponds to both total ozone concentration and surface temperature. That, that means they have a common cycle of length 24. What is the physical meaning of that? What is the physical understanding from that? This physically indicates that between the time point 0 and 24, the time series completes the cycle for both total ozone concentration and surface temperature. It completes the cycle in the frequency domain. Hence, we understand that during the transition from monsoon to post-monsoon, a strong association between total ozone concentration and 
surface temperature is there and they have common peaks. However, the surface temperature has more variability than total ozone concentration. And this might have occurred due to the fact that during this period, as I have already mentioned, that during this period, there are many religious events that lead to the emission of many pollutants. And that has a significant impact upon the environment. And that significantly influences the surface temperature. So that variability, as we have observed from the spectral density, that variability in the surface temperature might be due to the fluctuations in the environment due to the various events during this period from monsoon to post-monsoon. Furthermore, the fluctuations occur at 24, which is close to a monthly cycle because we are working in the daily scale and therefore it is in the close to monthly cycle. When a system enters post-monsoon from monsoon, the temperature obviously gradually decreases and this leads to a gradual depletion in the total ozone concentration. This decay happens in approximately monthly scale. And hence, September, September belongs to monsoon and close to post-monsoon. One cycle is completed near the end of September when post-monsoon is about to start and the temperature is expected to fall. And in the second cycle, the system is entering the post-monsoon and another cycle is going to be completed near the middle of October when there's a further fall in temperature. And the further fall is expected in the month of November. In the two subsequent cycles, the system is very close to winter and total ozone concentration and surface temperature are expected to reach their average minimum. We have carried out the similar analysis for the year 2016. Similar analysis with surface temperature and total ozone concentration. And here also we have observed, if we look at these, 24 and 24. Here also we have observed the similar pattern, not only that, a common cycle of length 24 has occurred in 2016 as well, like 2015. Therefore, 24 is identified as a common cycle for this, for the, anal the, the physical analysis I just presented. Now, after analyzing the related time series, we have the following findings. Both the time series, when transformed into spectra in the frequency domain, they exhibit significant spectral density at lower frequency and the higher frequency spectral densities are suppressed by the lower frequency densities. The total ozone concentration has lower degree of variability than the surface temperature. Power law trends, the trend lines, those are in the power law form. The power law trends fits well to the spectra obtained from the time series, both the time series, time total ozone concentration and the surface temperature. The spectra of total ozone concentration and surface temperature have apparent similarity in the basic pattern. And for both the years under consideration, the total ozone concentration and surface temperature have a common cycle of length 24, that is a period 24. The common cycle of period 24 in both the time series establishes a physical association between the variability of total ozone concentration with the surface temperature during the transition from monsoon to post-monsoon over our study zone. And that's all for this study. And these are some important references.